Dear friends, thank you for joining us today. There are times we must engage in difficult and uncomfortable conversations. For the last few weeks, I have been asked by many of you, what do I think about the death of Mr. George Floyd and protest following his death? I needed some time to process what I saw and what I read and what I felt. I believe the teaching of Jesus. In the Gospel of Matthew we read today gives us a lot to think about. I'm going to read the Gospel of Matthew chapter 10 verses from 34 to 36. Jesus said, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be members of his own household. Jesus said in this particular place, he did not come to us to bring peace, but a sword. He came to divide, not to unite. And Jesus is not encouraging or condoning violence, division, looting, or hatred. He is asking us to stand and speak against false peace and false unity. The kind of unity and the kind of peace that the Roman Empire built using their military force. By taking advantage of those who have less than them. By forcing others to agree. By forcing others to follow our rules. According to Jesus, that's not the kind of peace that God desires us to build. The peace of God is established by the love of Jesus Christ. It is created by our willingness to love, to speak truth in love, to listen and to challenge to understand and to pray for each other. For the last few days, we have seen protests in the United States as well as in Hong Kong, also in our own country. It just shows that our world is far from perfect. It shows that we are not united, that we are not on the same page. We are still struggling to understand what makes us human and what makes us one. It's not to become pessimistic on our humanity, but to accept the challenges and struggles that we have faced. We should be able to speak against racism and injustice. We all agree that looting or burning is not going to help. The kind of peace and equality that we want to create is not about bringing others down. Yet, we also recognize the anger and the pain that the people are carrying in their life. I believe the first step toward creating unity and peace is to recognize our struggles and our darkness. For the last few days, I have been asked by many of you, what do I say about racism? be honest with you, I really struggle to find words. And here's why. I am an ethnic minister a visible minority serving non-ethnic minority congregations. I am well accepted, loved, and treated by people in my congregations. 
Every day I work with people who treat me as another human being. So I ask myself, why do I want to talk about racism with members of my congregations who treat me and others so well? So I had to turn comes with it first. For three reasons, I thought I would share my thought on racism today. First, it's because you asked me to. It's because you asked me to. I understand many of you are interested to hear what a visible minority think about the situation. I feel it is one of my responsibility as an ethnic minister to open conversations and dialogue around racism. For some of you, I might be the first and the last ethnic minister that you will ever work with. And I do not want to miss this opportunity. Second, our Christian work goes beyond our community. Our Christian task is not just making our congregation a peaceful and loving place, but to help the rest of the world become a better place. Although that's not something I'm going through in this congregation, but racism does exist even in our small community. We have a lot of work to do. And it's not just my work, it's not just your work, it is everyone's work. Third, not only we can speak against racism, but we can speak and share hope. There are many places and communities that go beyond racial and cultural difference. And I believe our congregations have demonstrated that, that we are willing to work together beyond our racial and cultural differences. No, we're not saying we're perfect. We're far from perfect. We have struggles and many issues, but we can encourage and challenge others, go beyond systematic and cultural racism that is deeply rooted in our human history. Once again, I am truly grateful where I am and how I am welcomed and how I am treated by my congregations. I am blessed to serve you and work with you. But as soon as I take a step away from the church, that's not always the case. When I go to grocery store, restaurant, when I go pick up my kids from the school, once in a while I meet those who will treat others with a different accent or different skin color as if they have COVID-19 virus. Having said that, I would not pretend that I understand what many African American and the first native communities have been going through. Yet, once again, this is not to take away from the truth that there are far more kind people in this world than in our community. I certainly meet far more kind and generous people who will welcome you as one of you. My point today is simply that racism and human hatred does exist even in Grey Bruce community. And it happens far more than I would like to have experienced. Racism exists very near us. Many of us, including myself, were culturally taught to hate those who are different from us. And I don't think we as Christians have done a good job of welcoming those who are different from us. I like to believe there is more light 
than darkness in our world. But I also believe we should never ignore that darkness exists in our human life, however small that is, because damage the small group of people who act out of anger, ignorance, prejudice, can create in this world is far more significant than their small size. Why should we care about racism? I'd like to read what Reverend Martin Niemöller, the German Lutheran pastor, wrote during the Second World War. First, they came for the socialist. I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left speak for me. My experience with people who discriminate me or others based on their skin color, they usually don't stop there. They look down on people with disabilities. They look down on people with different gender. They look down on people with less income. They make fun of the homeless, the poor, and the sick. Fighting racism is not about fighting against racism, but human hatred and ignorance. If we truly desire to build peace in our life, we need courage to fight what is not true peace. And there is nothing more dangerous than the kind of peace that tolerates what is intolerant. And there is nothing more dangerous to us than the kind of peace that accepts what's not acceptable. Racism is not acceptable. The good news is that I believe we all can be changed in the grace of God. I don't think there is any quick way to change and grow and learn. But I believe we can change what we were taught. Mr. Nelson Mandela, who lived his life fighting for racial equality and justice, said, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. I too believe we can help each other to learn the way of Jesus Christ, the way of the gospel. It's not going to be easy, but if we are willing to be vulnerable, listen to each other's story, when we are willing to stand up for others, when we are willing to engage in difficult conversations, rather than pretending that's not existing here, I believe we can start taking a step toward tomorrow. Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 to 29. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in 
Christ Jesus. The Word of God reminds us that we are all children of God through faith. And that's the core message of the good news that we try to build and share with each other. Each day is our opportunity to look at our own heart and confront any darkness and bring it before God and allow to God to work with us, asking God's grace to help us to grow beyond what we knew yesterday. It is our prayer that each day we grow that much more. I'd like to close today's sermon with a prayer that was written by Rev. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Please join us in prayer. O oh God, we thank you for the lives of great saints, prophets in the past, who have revealed to us that we can stand up amid the problems and difficulties and trials of life and not given. We thank you for our four parents who've given us something in the midst of the darkness of exploitation and oppression to keep going. Grant that we will go on with the proper faith and the proper determination of will so that we will be able to make a creative contribution to this world. In the name and spirit of Jesus we pray. Amen.